everyone, I'm Krista Seiden, Analytics Advocate at Google, and today I'm joined by Scott Herman, who is a Product Manager on Google Tag Manager here at Google. So in this video, Scott is going to show us how to blacklist in the data layer for extra security on your websites. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Scott. Great. Thanks, Krista. Uh, so as Krista mentions, we're going to talk a bit about uh, a security feature that we have built into Google Tag Manager today called blacklisting. And we have a lot of security features built into Google Tag Manager to ensure the best collaboration between your IT development teams and your marketers so that Google Tag Manager is able to do everything you need it to do without compromising your sites and your apps and any, anywhere else you might be using it. Mm -hmm. um, so one of these features that's really meant to give the development team full control over what happens on their site is this tag blacklisting and whitelisting feature. Um, and uh, what we see here, this is a, a view of a container within uh, Google Tag Manager that I've set up with a custom HTML tag. And custom HTML tags are great because they can be very flexible to allow you to do the type of tagging that you might need to do, even if it doesn't have a template built into Google Tag Manager quite yet. Uh, but they can also do other things. They're a very flexible tool. And you want to make sure that uh, if you're using Google Tag Manager, that your development team understands the capabilities that it has and is comfortable with that. Um, for sites like financial institutions or um, sites like medical institutions that deal with a lot of personal data, this can often be a, a critical decision point between using Google Tag Manager and not. And we want to make sure everybody has the, the proper controls over what these tags are able to do, regardless of whether they're, they're using uh, GTM or not. So in this case, uh, we have a demo site here. Um, this is a demo site that we've used in a, in a previous quick tip video as well. Um, and we've set this up to deploy um, custom HTML tags whenever a link is clicked. Whenever one of these buttons is clicked, you can see that it's loading the, the, uh, this custom HTML tag to tell us what, which one of these buttons was clicked. Of course, you can do this for things like capturing certain information um, or to fire things in, in different custom scenarios. Um, but let's say that we're a website that doesn't want to enable this type of tagging to restrict custom HTML. Um, we have a feature called a blacklist and a whitelist. And if you go to our developer documentation, um, which is just developers.google.com slash tag dash manager, in our developer guide here, you'll find reference to all of the security features or a lot of the security features we have. And one of them, as I'm discussing, is this blacklist and whitelist. Now, this gives the developer who's actually implementing Google Tag Manager on the site full control over what this container that's implemented will actually be able to do. Um, in this section here, you'll find a list of all of the tags within Google Tag Manager and an ID. And we can list these IDs out and choose to either blacklist or whitelist them. Now, if we start to use a whitelist, it's important to note that only the things listed in that whitelist will actually work. And if we use a blacklist, anything that's blacklisted um, will not work. Now, there's some cool features of this, such as these, let me scroll down here, these classes. Now, I really recommend if you're going to dive into this feature to start to think about these classes because they allow you to sort of um, future-proof this restriction. So for example, if you um, blacklist HTML, this will automatically also blacklist custom scripts and anything else in the future that we might launch that is in this same type of functionality. Um, so to implement this on your site, fairly straightforward. In the data layer above Google Tag Manager, you want to make sure you've listed gtm.blacklist or if you were using a whitelist.whitelist and an array here with each of the IDs, either for the individual types or the classes that you're choosing to blacklist or whitelist. And this is the same container that we have implemented on this other page over here, same setup. But you'll notice when we go to fire things, it doesn't work because we've restricted custom HTML. Exactly, because you blacklisted them. Right. That's very cool. So thanks for showing us how to use blacklisting uh, via the data layer mm -hmm. for extra security on your websites. Thanks for watching.